This one has been a long time coming, but we're finally getting a Fallout TV show. This, of course, is based on the incredibly popular game franchise. It's on Prime Video. It's got a fantastic lineup, but more importantly, it's from the brains behind Westworld, Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolan. Now, before we get into it, I want to ask you a question, Bahir. Sure, shoot. Sure. So Fallout, for me at least, is one of the seminal gaming experiences of my youth. Okay. In that I played the original game that it was inspired by Wasteland way back when I was a little kid. It was on my Commodore 64, and I used to love that game, which then led me to kind of reading a lot of post-apocalyptic stories like I Am Legend, A Boy and His Dog. I think it's also why I love The Last of Us as much as I do. Right, right, right. And so the first two games, when they came out, were fantastic. They were very different from the Fallout games we have now. They were point-and-click turn-based adventures as opposed to the first-person shooter-type things or first-person RPG-type things that we get now with Fallout, right? Yep. So it was a very seminal experience for me. And my perception of the show is somewhat clouded because as I go into this, Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolan seem to hit all of the right marks that I am expecting as a fan of the game. And so they are giving me, the fan, exactly what I want. And therefore, I have no idea what it's going to be like for someone who doesn't know the game or isn't as big a fan. I've played one of the games, but I barely got out of 20 minutes into it. So going into this, what was your reaction to it? I mean... It's a Prime Video, Lisa Joy, Jonathan Nolan production. So we don't need to talk about how beautiful it looks and all of that stuff. We've seen Westworld. We know what they're capable of. Yes, yes. I mean, I actually actively very much love Westworld and was disappointed when it was cancelled. But I think Fallout is a hard sell for people who, one, don't know it's a video game, two, don't care that it's a video game, And three, are not into post-apocalyptic stuff. Because there's a real interesting and weird sense of humor slash action slash storytelling that is based in the Fallout universe. Like, I know there's a satirical element to the games as well. I know there is a hyper-realism to the way they approach the robot and the world of the video game. And they bring that here. So if you cannot get past the fact that almost 300 years post a nuclear war has hit the planet that there's these zombies there are people in a fallout shelter and then there are people who are semi-religious knights of the realm then you will have trouble with this and that was why i asked that question because even as i was watching it the stuff i loved was I think they got the vault stuff down. I think they got the production design down. I think they got the ultra violence of the game down. I love the design of the knights. I love how they capture all of the stuff that I saw in the games, the mood, the tone, the music, the satire, the weird comedy. All of that is there. But I wasn't sure there's enough of an access point for someone who is coming into this without my background knowledge of everything. I feel like the show doesn't require it because they'll tell it to you. When we first see Maximus and the Brotherhood of the Steel, there's an immediate like, oh shit, these guys are weirdos, but I'm into it. Like for me, the hardest one to get into is the ghoul stuff. Only because there was very little explanation as to that thing. Yeah, they do the info dump on you when we're first encountering the ghoul. These three grave robbers talk about how, oh, they're brought up every other year and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, "Mm, okay, whatever. If you can get past the ghoul, I think you can be on board with the show. Because that to me is the hardest thing to get into almost. Okay, that's really good. Because I love it. I think it's a really Mm. well-made show. But I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't coming to it from the point of view of a fanboy. Oh, no, but I feel like there are these caveats to it, right? Like, this isn't a show for my elder sister who's not a fan of science fiction, post-apocalyptic stuff, satire, science fiction, Western. It's not for her. 
might be for my dad. I might recommend it to him, but I feel like you need to have these caveats. You need to know what you're coming into the show with. The show isn't for everybody. It is a very specific slice of storytelling that you need to like to get into it. I don't believe that you need to have played the game or need to have platinum the game to know everything about it. Oh, I totally agree. And only because I think Fallout makes for a very interesting exercise in adaptation because of even how the game is structured. Not just because it's a traditional RPG, but because of this idea of leaving from vaults and you are the main character who is in a vault and because you are constructing that character in the game, you are playing a version that you create for yourself and mm. you are on that journey in the story. So therefore, showrunners and show creators can really dig deep and have a lot of fun and they don't necessarily have to be slavish to the game. And that's what I like. And I think that makes it a very exciting adaptation because this Fallout can be just another story in the Fallout universe that we've had in Fallout 1, 2, Tactics, New Vegas, 3, 4, all of yeah. it, right? And so for me, that makes the show unique as an adaptation, pretty interesting because obviously Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolan have crafted three very interesting leads in Ella Purnell, Aaron Moten, and Walton Goggins. Like we see this show from their POVs. Uh, there's Lucy McLean, who's this young Walt dweller. There's Aaron Moten, who's Maximus, who is of the Brotherhood of Steel. And then there's Walton Goggins, who plays the ghoul. And then, of course, with Ella Purnell and Aaron Moten, you can see that their characters are on these divergent paths. Like, she is this bright-eyed protagonist who is going down a path of darkness. And he, of course, seems to be going in the opposite direction with gaining a heart. I'm still not sure what Walton Goggins is going to end up, but he's Walton fucking Goggins and I just love him. Even under all of that makeup, he is still so cool. I feel like that was the most interesting, exciting and daring decision to tell the story of Fallout from the point of view of these three, what are they called in the game? Classes? Yes, character classes, I would say. Character classes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so... So instead of just picking one and then leaving the ghoul as the outside or leaving the Brotherhood of Steel as just the enemy, right? Yeah. You're allowing for all these points of view in this weird post-apocalyptic world to come to the forefront. It's not just a, oh, look, you, the audience, is Ella Purnell, this bright-eyed, bushy-tailed weirdo coming into the world looking at all these other weirdos. But you're getting everybody's point of view instead. And I feel like that was the greatest decision they made for this. Khan, that was the genius yeah. in adaptation. Like that is a true understanding of what an RPG is and what yes. character classes are yeah. and how yeah. you want to tell the story. You're not forcing the audience into one point of view because the game never forced you into one point of view. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know if you had the same feeling. We were given access to the first four episodes. And for me, it really scratched that Westworld itch. Oh, yeah. I mean, it is weird. It doesn't feel as serious as the first Westworld. And we know it's a completely different thing. Yes, yes. It's just a completely different thing. But there is a thing about the writing. There is a thing about the world building that feels familiar. And just talking about the world building, the other thing that Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolan get down is everything around. When we spoke to Ella Purnell and Aaron Moten, and you will see that interview shortly, they were talking about how 90% of it was practical and only 10% was like green screen. Right. They used the volume as well. And a lot of it feels so tactile. Like the world that they've created feels so great. And well, I say great in a horrible way because it's a horrible world, but it feels yes. and it looks amazing. And the creatures they have constructed are fucking disgusting. And they don't pull their punches with regards to violence and body horror and bad things happening to our heroes because yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is the world. You are 200, 300 years after an apocalypse. The world is a shitty and dangerous place and it's not going to be pretty. Yeah. And this show is not pretty. This really doesn't feel like a show that will hit the older demographic of the four quadrants. I'm not saying they're not going to like it. I'm saying that it's not going to be a general use for all of them. This feels like it's squarely within the 
mid 40s and below crowd. I feel like this show I worry that this show might have trouble finding an audience. I feel like it's not straight up funny funny fun time. I think Fallout is a much easier sell than say Wheel of Time. Oh, yeah. I All think right. Wheel of Time got a lot better and I really enjoyed season 2. I okay. think it was a hard sell for anyone who wasn't into fantasy because it wasn't quite as accessible as Game of Thrones. Fallout, I think, is a much easier sell because of the characters that it draws as being interesting individuals outside of the fantasy setting. Okay, okay, okay. And I think that's what's drawing me to Ella Purnell's Lucy and Aaron Morton's Maximus and Walton Goggins as the ghoul. I want to know more about those individuals as characters because they've been set up really well in the first episode as people with fascinating stories that I want to explore. So even if the world wasn't as well produced or as interesting, or even if I didn't have all the background knowledge I have on Fallout, I'm still interested in these characters. And the three of them are really, really good actors. Like, they really sell it. And it's a lot of fun. I feel like it's interesting because they could have so easily made the Ella Purnell character one way, right? She could have been the Dorothy in Wizard of Oz. They could have made the Maximus character the uber alpha male brotherhood guy. But they didn't. I like the fact that they're layered characters. That Ella Purnell looks like a sweetheart, but at moments of crisis, she has got no bones about pulling the knife out of her stomach, grabbing a gun, and going outside. So that I like. I like that these characters are more than just one-dimensional, deer caught in headlight kind of characters. They're all just like, I'll grab it, I'll do it, let's go. We think you should check it out. I think it is definitely worth your time. Unlike The Last of Us, I don't know if this will actually make you want to go out and play the games. They're quite different. Yeah. They since are. they're a lot more open-ended. Yeah. So if you aren't already a gamer, it might not be your thing. But I think it's a really good point of access into a very rich world. Like the writers of the game over the years have done a really good job in creating this retro futuristic version of a post-apocalyptic earth and i'm glad that i get to see it this way so check out fallout it's already streaming on prime video let us know what you think you can reach out on all of our social media feeds goggler my you can also email us on podcast at goggler.my or send us a whatsapp on the goggler hotline 012-524-5208 thank you so much for listening this is the Gogler Podcast.